I finally got my head right I move in silence, you won't catch me in them headlights And they love to say they love you if they need some If they see you moving solid in your bread's right I finally got my head right I move in silence, you won't catch me in them headlights And they love to say they love you if they need some If they see you moving solid in your bread's right Pick up the county, put it down for the town Third week in a row. Third week. How about that? Episode three. Who would have thought that? Honestly, like, I feel like now, this episode, especially in the episodes that are coming forward, like, I think the first two episodes were taking off the advice Josh gave us last week, how we, we, he doesn't want us to find a blueprint. But at the same time, it was kind of like, we were kind of playing around with things, kind of figuring out what we want to do. And now, I think just, you know, especially coming off of last week, we kind of know the direction we want to go in and it's, it's going to get better from here. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about that? Absolutely. Huh? You're right off. Bro, someone, <laughs> we need to get that on a shirt. We need to get that on a shirt. We really do. We really do. <laughs> we need do. to get that on a shirt. We really do. <laughs> What's going I'm on really, with you? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I, uh, I, I did want to talk about a little bit about your post. I, I was reading through that and, and then I, I, I think right after that, I sent you an article, um, sent you a short article it was kind of like a I think it was like a I don't want to say diary but something like something from a uh, a former cop who kind of moved on from it and kind of talked about the culture that he lived you know worked in and, and kind of the petty things that they worked for um and I and, and I think too like I'm just I'm confused right now honestly I'm really confused um I I, I think I think for one because you know, as much as we, you know, want to be mad at police officers and want to be so angry and all that, and we are, everyone is, but we, I just feel like, I just feel like that we can't, the the more divided we get, the more that gap gets bigger. It, it, I feel like that's not going to make anything better. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like you said, I know you talked about, you know, about supporting defund the police. And, and, and I don't know much about that. And I'm not going to talk like I do, but that could be a step. You know what I mean? I, I liked what you said about that too. Yeah, bro. Just like confused is a good word because like you said, the, the whole divide, it's, it, I don't like to see it. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? I've Social media, I, I, need, I need to take a break from it, honestly. Like I, 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 I let's, where should I start with the post that I made? It touched on, kind of the whole defund the police um situation that, that sure. I don't know if it's going to happen but it's being talked about and basically in what it entails is it's not literal it's not taking all of the money it's basically just like using the money in a better in a better way there's so many um outlets that the police have budgets for and the money is it's unneeded like for example the overtime money it's it's ridiculous bro it's oh, it's ridiculous I, I read a stat that said that most arrests happen in the last 30 minutes of a shift the reason why is because they take advantage of the long process it takes to arrest somebody so they take advantage of that ot money and it checks it crazy i forget i forget what percentage it was i don't want to put that information out there but it was over like 70 60 percent i'm sure i'm sure happened in the last 30 minutes of a shift and that's just one thing that i could think of off the top of the head but i i just think they need to be held more accountable i I know this yeah no go ahead no keep going I know this episode does, isn't going to be too cop-oriented. We have some things planned, and we're going to get into that eventually. But I wanted to talk about that a little bit because it's current, and it's going on right now. And it's just, the uh, bro, I, wasn't, I got into, like, two Facebook likes yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I, I try to keep my opinions off there because, like, you can't win those. Like, it, it's impossible. You just can't. It's impossible to win those. It's, it's impossible. impossible. It's impossible, yeah. bro. It's, uh, it's someone impossible. pulls some stat out of somewhere, and she's like, okay. So, you know, I, I try to, but like the the issue, the reason why I say, why I use the word confused is like, you know, as well as I do is like, there's so many great cops out there and like, and, and kind of going off of, you know, tonight's episode, the, the lady I worked with, Gabby, her, her dad is a police officer down in Maryland. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know that. So, okay. Yeah. And, and that's actually one thing that we're going to talk to her about. So it kind of fits in a little bit um, is that like. You know, as many times as we want to, and, and here's a quick example, and, and this is in Greensburg, and, and this is, um, there was one time I was driving through a red light, right, and, or I was just coming up to a red light, and a cop was right in front of me, and he did what they did in the movie Superbad, where he flicks his lights on, 
goes through the red light and flicks his lights off. I see that. I got, I forget who was in the car with, but I got so mad in the friends I was listening to the car. I was like, dude, what are you doing? I was like, no, like I'm following this dude. Like, this is ridiculous. I was like, that's where it starts. He thinks yeah. because that, you know, he did, he's got the badge on, he can go through a red light. I said, no, that's illegal. If his lights aren't on for an emergency, they should not be on. Um, yeah. but, but then again, you know, like I just said, is like, there's so many good police officers out there that like, like Aaron Allen and, and Taven and, and those guys that we taught, you know, have talked to a little bit. Um, it's hard to kind of understand where to kind of where, where should my opinion fall? Like, do we do we kind of fall on like every cop should be held kind of put in the same cat you know what I mean the same category or you know what I mean like how do we do that like I, I mean I, I think defunding the police is definitely something that can be looked at um I I know I listened to today that the biggest thing they need is training and yes. and and like yes. I, I'm yes. hoping that this is the start of that you know what I mean I hope that these local bureaus and police departments start looking at that more seriously yeah, bro. Taven, he actually got a hold of me after I made my post. And I was going to get a hold of him because I didn't want, I didn't, we have a good relationship. I didn't want anything to change. So he got a hold of me and we had a quick discussion and he brought up some good points. But I think my stance is still the same. Some points that he brought up were the fact that on average, it costs $80,000 to train one police officer and $120,000 to train a sheriff. And some other stats that I looked at after the fact were that, listen to this, bro. On average, police have four hours of combative training in a year. In a year. I in heard a that whole too. Year, bro. I heard that in too. In an entire year. Yeah. I like I, I train more in two days in the gym. And I don't have a gun. I don't have a badge. I'm not protecting the service. I know. I know. It's just I think I think they need to they need to train more. They need to be more equipped in those situations because it could be years that a cop doesn't see a combative situation. It could be years. And then all of a sudden, they're in the moment, a split-second decision, life or death, and they got to make the right choice. Well, that, that, that's, a, that, that, that's a good point, too, of, like, um, you know, the thing that just happened down in Atlanta with, um, with, the, with the, I don't want to use anyone's name, but um, yeah. the, the, the guy who stole the, stole, steals the taser and, and the cop ends up shooting him in the back was, like, I, I don't want to look at that and say, like, yeah, that cop was a, you know, a, a piece of garbage. I mean, he, he, he was in a sense, but, like, I think a big part of that, too, was that, like, he just didn't know how to handle himself. You can kind of clearly, see him. Clearly. You can kind of see him as, as the guy takes his taser. You can see it in his body language that he's, like, he didn't know what to do. And, like, his probably because, you know, you, just like you hit on, is, like, you know, they, they focus more on, probably arms training where they you know they may not call it training but they go to the gun range and they you know practice doing the stuff like that so it's just like yeah i, I don't know I'm, I'm hoping that i'm hoping that the police departments open their eyes and try to make the necessary adjustments i don't i'm not going to talk kind of like i know the answer because i don't but something needs to change man. something needs just to change the conversation it's exactly we don't know the answers we're just trying to start the conversation trying to find the answers you know what i'm saying thanks bro mm-hmm. With that whole, um, like I was, I, I've been doing more research on that whole, that whole case and that whole situation. Yeah. And it was weird at first because it was like, well, like, what, what exactly happened? And then I'm like, what are the rules in that state? Because like I said, each department, each state, they all have different regulations and different rules they got to abide by. And according to their policy, the cops, they completely, they completely messed that up from the jump. Oh, really? Um, they, they didn't read him his rights. There's oh, a rule wow. that you're, you're not allowed to chase a man. Like once he took the taser, they weren't allowed to chase him. By yeah, him. and they shot at him with a bystander behind the guy. They weren't allowed to do that. There were nine separate oh. charges that the guy caught, and he they, he broke protocol on on, on all all, on all stances, all of them, every single one. And it's it's just crazy to me, bro, because like I go on Facebook yesterday, and I see I see black people, I see I see a I see people celebrating about the justice, and it's like it's a sad kind of celebration because it like, is. Damn, it's like damn like we're celebrating because we get we get justice it's like that's where we're at yeah you know yeah I mean? no i know like, that's where i feel you on that and, and like that's actually kind of in- that's really interesting of like breaking it down because the media seems like it just oh another cop shoots in a, another black man in the back and, and here we go but when you break it down and look at actually you know he 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 broke this protocol he broke this protocol he did you know there were so many things that led up to the the big event that that almost let's not i don't say shift the focus but let's put our 
you know, our, the energy into, you know, why were this, why was this broken in the first place? Why did he do this? You know what I mean? Like, so I think that could be something that could be done immediately. Um, but then on the, on the other hand, there are just some cops and people in this country that just a should not be B gen genuinely don't like people of different races. And, yes. and, 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 and that's, you know, I don't know how you, how do you, you can't, you can't fix someone's mind until you fix their heart. So I don't, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's a whole different discussion in itself of how to fix that issue too. I'm really excited to grow about this episode because I want to get into the mental side of things. And that's mm -hmm. something I've, I've been like the past like two years, I kind of, I don't want to say an awakening, but I've been on this kind of just spiritual mental health kind of journey situation where I've been diving in and, you know, just getting better, bro, and learning a lot. And things that I want to talk about, especially with the women that we're bringing on later on, is the psychology behind it all, bro. Mm -hmm. Like some of these men, they aren't mentally equipped to be in that situation. You may be when you get the job, yeah. but things happen, bro. Things happen where your mental just goes, they have a stressful job. They have an it, insanely it stressful job. It and is. you got to be meant, you got to be tip top. You know what I mean? You got to be at, the, at, the, at your peak to be able to, to be in that type of job. And a lot, a lot of these guys, I think they just break down mentally, man. It's just, and those are the guys with guns. Yeah, and I, I, I'm speaking generally. I'm not. I'm not grouping. I'm not trying to group. No, no, no. I know together. what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking real generally. So, yeah, I'm excited to kind of see her opinion on. I think psych evaluations could be could be dope. Regularly, that. month by month, two months like every year, something just to make sure these men are still equipped. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I'm just excited to to get them on. And um, before we talk about them, we're bringing on another girl from. The Greensburg area. Her name is Brianna Tomsey. I don't know her too well personally. I follow her on social media, and yeah. I saw she's been going. She's been going hard, bro. Yeah. Post posting about everything, bro. And and I and I felt like she was gonna be someone really cool to to bring on and kind of bring a different perspective on what she's experienced and the things that she's doing in the school as well. She's she's trying to make some change in, in the school. So I'm curious to see what. She yeah, has to yeah, say. I am too. I'm, I'm definitely excited to hear what. Um, I, I know you talked about that that she's talking about trying to get an african-american studies within the curriculum and i think that that's something that you know I, i'm kind of see what her you know we use the word blueprint but kind of what did she you know how did she do that you know what i mean like that could be yeah. taken just from this school district to any school district in america of take kind of take her take her lead i mean and I'm, I'm curious to see how she did it so uh absolutely. i'm ready uh let, let, yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> let's bring her on in let's see what's going on Hi, how are you guys? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, real good. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We appreciate yeah, it. of course. Are you in town? Are you in Colorado? Where are you I'm at? in Colorado right now. Lucky. I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah it's I'm been jealous. nice yeah. out here. <laughs> what, what are you doing out there? Hold on, go ahead, Nick. Um, I just graduated from school, actually. My lease is up in July, so I'm just kind of hanging out until I have to go back to Pennsylvania. Oh, good so. for you. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Mm -hmm. I get jealous. I look at your, your pictures, and I see all the scenery and the mountains. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, it's absolutely beautiful out here. It sucks that, like, my last two months of school, I couldn't be on campus, but, you know, let's just, just exploring. <laughs> The best we got is like Twin Lakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's about all we got out here. It's always amazing. For sure. So um yeah, I, I kind of gave a quick little introduction. Um what yeah. I wanted to what I wanted to start with at first is we I kinda got a hold of you and we we've been talking a little bit since yeah. the podcast came out and you've touched on how you've got a hold of I believe it was the superintendent or it was a teacher yeah. at Greensburg Salem mm -hmm. about implementing an African American studies course. Kind yeah. of talk about that a little bit because that, that's interesting. As, as, yeah. As, I don't want to, so, yeah, I don't want to cuss on here, but yeah. Keep right? <laughs> <laughs> the um, superintendent. So I basically just Googled because I wasn't sure who the superintendent was at this point. I know it's changed. Um, his name is Gary Pfeiffer, Dr. Gary Pfeiffer. So I just emailed him basically and I was just asking, well, one, I talked about a lack of black teachers at the school in general. Um, and with that, I mean a lack of teachers, a lack of nurses, a lack of counselors that are black. We, I mean, our, our uh, faculty is mostly white at Greensburg Salem. Um, and I know we t you guys talked about that with Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Lehman. Um, so then I basically asked him what we could do to initiate a course where we had talked about not only African American history, but cultural studies in general, because I feel like that's something that's really important. 
Um, and he said that they're working this summer to try to start um, an elective in the works. Um, but they said they need to kind of figure out what they're going to put in it um, and when the course is going to be available. So I think that right now they just need kind of like a curriculum, um, kind of mapping out what we can teach. And um, I'm not sure who has all the power, though, if it's the school board that has all the power, or if it is the state um, that has the say, because the class he's saying doesn't have to be mandatory. I think that if a class like this is to come about, it should be mandatory. Um, so I think I agree. that's the only issue. Yeah, same. So what do you guys think about that? I think that's really cool. And it kind of brings up a point that um, Lena Thomas, she was a member, she came on last the last week's podcast and she talked about how they oversee curriculum. So I think maybe, um, I'm going to talk with her. I'm going to talk with her after this and, and see if yeah. she could kind of to help with that. Because I think she, the, the school board could definitely help along with that for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, they were just saying that it takes a lot of steps. I'm not sure what the process is, but I think speaking with Ms. Thomas would help. Um, and just kind of talking about what kind of things we should put in the course, because there's a lot that we ha haven't covered. I mean, there's a lot of history that hasn't been covered that we need to cover. So I think that it'd be a community thing to try and come together and see, hey, I have this piece of information that I think would be helpful to share. You know what I mean? That's so, interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, no, no I know. I definitely agree. Um, I, I know that I'm sure the state of Pennsylvania has some, I, I don't know about say, but I know that there's some hoops that school districts have to jump through. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, like, Rihanna, I, I love that, that you're pushing for it because, like, like, when we talked to Lena last week, uh, Mrs. Thomas, she said that the the school board specifically votes on what should be taught in in the school district so i think that you know getting something in there that is 100 percent you know like you just said kind of getting heads together and putting everything together and and what should, should be taught in there i think is awesome um i did want to kind of ask you like I, I know you said that you just email him um what what kind of was your your approach almost like I know you emailed him and kind of said this but kind of, like kind of like walk us through like almost that email like what did you kind of say and, and um, all that I basically started with I mean everything that's going on right now with the protests um I just talked about how there's another pandemic that's going on and it's this pandemic of racial injustice um that we've been seeing I mean this has never gone away as Mr. Lehman was saying on here um so I just kind of said like hey the whole world right now is hurting I think that with in our community, it starts with education and the way you're the person in charge of that. So I think that you have the most say in what can be done. Um, he did something that they implemented the Holocaust course, a new Holocaust course recently at Greensburg Salem. So I'm thinking if you guys can initiate a Holocaust course, then we can also do um, a Black Studies course and just a Cultural Studies course in general, because I don't know if you guys remember some of the classes that you took, but I don't remember ever taking um, a cultures course or anything the closest we got was mr layman actually teaching religion like he world studies yeah of religions and that was interesting because whenever you see a connection that you have with a person of a different religion that kind of blurs that line of ignorance and allows you to see that connection with another person and i think with that we can do the same situation if we get to understand black history more we'll have that opportunity to erase that barrier that we've always had there between white and black you know what i mean hundred percent. I love how you touched on not just the black history, but all the different cultures. Yes. The thing that I, I really don't like to see when, when people say like, I don't see color or that, that yeah. whole sentiment to me, to me, that is like Stupid. the great thing about America is the diversity. It, it's mm -hmm. having, it's having white friends, it's having black friends, yes. mm -hmm. having Spanish friends. There's things that I can't do with my white friends that I can't do with my black friends. There's things yeah. that I can't do with my Spanish friends. I can't do exactly. with my white friends. You know <laughs> sure. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's knowing someone's culture and knowing mm -hmm. that person for who they are and really yeah. understanding that, not being blind to it. So mm -hmm. I, 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 would love, I would love for something like that to, to get put into school. And I wish I was in high school to kind of experience it. Right. Yeah, I know. And like whenever I was growing up, um, whenever I did go to school, I know we talked about this a little bit before. My experience, I'm half Puerto Rican and half white. So my experience was, I mean, I have white privilege, obviously. I recognize my privilege. I understand that I'm white passing. Um, but growing up, I did experience race, racism at Greensburg Salem. I mean, I got asked where my green card was, even though my mother was a United States citizen from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States. Um, I was called a wetback. I was called a spick. You know what I mean? Like those types of things because people just didn't understand 
where I was coming from. And I'm sure, I mean, that has a lot to do with their parents and the rhetoric that's yeah. around that issue as well. But I think that it really just starts with education. So I, that's why I wanted to get this started. Absolutely. And I know we, we kind of talked about this and mm -hmm. I really want to use this platform. I don't even know if I'm going to call it a platform. It's something that we're yeah. building. I want to, yeah. yeah, I want to use this podcast to kind of speak to people and to put good information out there because like mm -hmm. you said the experiences you've had with getting called those names and things mm -hmm. i i hate i hate to admit this and i and i told you it's a moment in my life that i really i hate to think about but there were times growing up at greensburg where i've been either on the football team or in a room of white guys and and the n-words thrown around or some type of racist mm -hmm. remarks thrown around and and as a kid in that moment i didn't like i didn't stick up for myself it was That's just right. kind of like a it was it was kind of something that was accepted in a way, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and that's not right. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not calling out. I'm not saying it was, I don't know how I want to put it. Like there were, it was just, it was wrong. It was yeah. wrong. It, it was discriminative and it was just wrong. And I want kids to understand, like, I don't care if you're the only black kid in the school, stick up for yourself. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if, they pronounce your name, if they pronounce your name wrong, correct them right, right there. You know what I mean? Like at a young age, we gotta, we gotta, teach these kids so they don't make the same mistakes that I did. It wasn't until okay. late high school when I realized like, oh, oh, what? No, don't say that around me. Yeah. Bro. Like, that's yeah. not cool. You know, so mm -hmm. I, that was a great point you brought up and I'm happy you kind of, you know, share that. With us. Yeah, and with education as well, I mean, we will be able to teach kids that those types of words and those stereotypes and those slurs are not okay because of the history that they came with, you know? Like the whole, the thing that's going on with the Aunt Jemima syrup right now, that's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. People don't understand the history behind that. That, like that whole mammy figure, that was a black woman supposed to be nurturing and caring for the white children of the slave master. So yeah. that's really the history behind it. And I think that people just need to be more open-minded and more aware and just willing to educate themselves because we have so many resources at our fingertips today, so. I think that's definitely something that, that and, and kind of in the first episode that I talked about too, especially for white people in America is like, to actually take the time to learn yes. and feel it as much as you can. I mean, it, like I said to Terry before, like I'm, I, I will never fully understand, you know, what it's like to be black in America. I will never fully understand what it's like to be, you know, a minority in this country. But what I can do is just feel, you know, I said in the first episode when I looked up, you know, when I learned about this in high school about Emmett Till and you look at the pictures and the, the hurt on, on that, you know, on the mother. And, and, and if you can't look at something like that by being whatever race you are and, and feel, feel exactly and feel something, I, I just don't, I don't understand. I, I think that's like you said, that's where it starts is educating. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, there's probably, I bet you there's probably not one kid at Greensburg that has ever even heard of Emmett Till just because they don't talk about it. That's a significant event because that was a huge catalyst into our civil rights movement in the 60s. And, and it's sad that kids don't know what that is. And, and, and exactly what you said, education is where it starts. Yeah. And I think another thing is if we had more Black teachers, as I was saying, we would have more because they want to tell people their story. We don't get that side. I think that there would be more representation, too. And also with how we were talking about how there's not enough um, students that are going to be teachers, black students that are going to be teachers. If we, they see a black teacher and they grow up with a black teacher, they're gonna be like, oh, I wanna be like that someday. They don't see that, they see I was, a That was just like Terry Absolutely. when we had Cheryl on last week, uh, the, um, the, she was a, an attorney and she said when she was in- Yeah, Brianna got it. Did you get in touch with her, Brianna? Yes, I did. did, you, I did you did? Oh, awesome. That's what's up. Awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what's up. She said, Brianna said she inspired her. Yes, she did. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, she, she was. And I didn't even know her, but uh, she she put some fire on here last week. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, seriously. And I think she touched on the um, the counselors, too. And that's another thing. I know we wanted to talk about mental health. Um, growing up at Greensburg, I don't ever remember there being a Black uh, guidance counselor. Ever. No, not at all. So whenever you're going as a black person to speak to somebody about your issues, which is already something that's difficult to do. I know it's the same in the Latin community as well, where there's a stigma around talking about your mental health issues in the first place. But if they did choose to go and they chose to go to a therapist and they're sitting there trying to talk about their experience, 
but that person is white, they'll, they may understand them on a certain level, but like Nick was saying, you'll never understand fully. You'll be able to feel it, but you'll never fully understand. So it, I think that's like another disconnect that needs to happen in schools. So that's another thing I'm gonna work on with the um, superintendent, see if we can try and get more mental health resources for um, our black students because- Yeah, and, that, and that's absolutely. something that our, 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 our next, you know, after you get off our next two guests that we have on, um, the Gabby is, she's a guidance counselor at the school, I, at the elementary school I work in, and she's a, she's a young black, black woman. Um, and then Jada, who also works for Psychology Today in Pittsburgh, um and and, and I'm, I'm anxious to kind of piggyback off that and kind of see where they can put you know those resources together yes. um, and do something like that mm -hmm. i think starting it at that young age like i want it to be like mm -hmm. in, in like a typical high school hallway if someone were to be like oh i got mental health issues or, or mm -hmm. i meditate it looks it's like it's you get picked on it's soft yeah so if five years ago five years ago if you would have told me like that tara you meditate i would have been like what but i meditate every day now you know what i mean <laughs> i realize how important that stuff is yeah i would, I would be like meditate what? yeah <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> yeah but that stuff is so important taking care mm -hmm. of your mental um making sure you're whatever it is just fi finding more about yourself and that's what it all is for me and i want kids to understand like let's start it in high school don't wait till you're an adult like take exactly. care of yourself at, at 17 16. yeah I, I think too like especially in the male community is that there's especially, this especially. A, there's just such as i mean like i i i, I see a psychologist or a, a, a psychologist every couple of weeks and That's it's not even like and, and to me it's it, it just a it's just an outlet to talk to somebody it's just exactly. to you know i think people put such a stigma on it that like oh you like go talk to somebody what's wrong with you and it's just like yeah. no it's just like you've got all these you have so many thoughts in a day that yeah. like you don't know where to put them all and like a lot you know so many kids put them different places and that aren't healthy and it's just i think that needs to be a change too and like brianna said like especially in the school making it you know normalizing it to go talk to somebody and not just like oh you know hey we're calling you down to the guidance counselor's office and everyone's like oh because that's how it would be too. exactly it's exactly what it would be like mm -hmm. almost embarrassed to get called down there yeah that's horrible it's like almost as bad as going to the principal's office really, yeah exactly so, yeah i think it definitely needs <laughs> yeah. to be like, Ooh. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was me that was me all the time <laughs> with everything that's going on in the media too i think it's so because kids nowadays are using social media more and more so i just think that it's really important for them to get mental health uh, resources for mental health um, to take care of themselves but i'm interested to let you guys exactly. i want to hear what they have to say so i'm gonna let you guys go but yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah. is there anything you want to kind of leave off with a little mic drop um, if you will. just really with the mental health aspect i just want to tell people that it is okay to get help and that it, especially in times like today i mean we're in the middle of a pandemic we're in the middle of a virus we're in the middle of racial inequality which we have been forever like i said like there are so many aspects of things that are going on right now it's completely okay for you to get help if you need it um, and I'm going to send you a link to some resources, specifically resources for um, Black women, because they are really the ones that are being targeted right now. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to send you some resources about that so we can post them. So thank you guys. I appreciate so that. I appreciate I mean, it. Lot. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for coming. Thank you for hopping on. Bye. See ya. Peace. All right. So, um, yeah, we just had Brianna on. Um, we're going to bring in two, two young Black women that are going to kind of enlighten us on some mental health. Um, and kind of their field of work, and I'm excited to talk to them. I'm excited. I'm not, I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to contain it. I'm I know. I know. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let them both in. And hi, Jada. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so glad for you joining us. Hi, Gabby. How you doing, Jada? What's going on, girls? Hey, hi. Guys. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm I I know Gabby and Jada a little bit. Um, and then this is Terry. How we doing? <laughs> nice to meet you all. Good. good. I think nice is Gabby muted? Is, is Gabby good? Sure. She, she she'll probably yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be muted and unmuted because I have a really loud big dog upstairs. So, you know, <laughs> Understandable. Gonna decide to start screaming at the door. <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. I have an infant and she screams a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Well, Babies are welcomed on the head right yeah. She <laughs> might pop in. <laughs> That's all right. We encourage it. But uh, we appreciate both of you coming on. Um, or just kind of a little introduction. Uh, Jada, just kind of who you are and um, kind of what kind of line of work you're in. Um, and we'll kind of start there. Okay. Um, my name is Jada Pinnell. I am a nationally certified counselor, pre-licensed um, LPC. I work for a private practice. It's all black owned called Onyx Therapy Group. And I'm a doctoral student at Duquesne University and I'm studying counseling education and supervision. Awesome. Thanks, Jada. And uh, Gabby, you same. I know you guys don't really know each other, but Gabby, you went to Duquesne too, right? Yeah. So um, I did my undergrad at Duquesne and I'm originally from Silver Spring. And then I came back and I did my um, counseling program at DW. And so now I'm actually, I'm a school counselor, but I also have like all of the credits to get my LPC. So that's been kind of my next thing. I want to be like you soon. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of on that's the awesome. same path, very similar, very similar things. Take some time. <laughs> Good luck. A lot of time. It's not, it's, not easy, it's not easy work at all. I applaud you both for sure. Takes a lot of things. <laughs> well, <it> is. <laughs> well, Jada, I kind of, I kind of, I asked you to be on because I, you know, I, I, I follow you on social media and everything. And I watch what you do and, and read um, some of your stuff in your profile and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I really just want to kind of get your perspective on, you know, what has the last couple weeks and months been for you um, in your field of work in Pittsburgh and. Um, kind of what are some things that we can kind of do to help and, and where you know wherever you want to take it um, okay so prior to everything going on I guess when the pandemic started it was actually really slow because a lot of people were in the hospital so it was more geared to like nurses and doctors and notice as it's kind of starting to dissipate as clinicians we're really getting hit um because a lot of people have anxiety depression is increasing they need somebody to talk to and i'm pretty much at capacity with my caseload that's actually had to slow myself down um because of everything that's going on now um with black people being killed it's actually been really emotionally exhausting for me as a practicing clinician so i've actually had to take a step back and really take care of myself um, i'm on social media but i kind of post like funny things things that are kind of keeping us uplifted because it's, it's just really really too much so my biggest goal right now is to start taking care of myself because i haven't been in the right frame of mind to be the best therapist for my clients and i've had to cancel a few sessions i have to really take on some self-care because it's been really really overwhelming just we went from a pandemic into just seeing people of color being killed all across the nation still to this day so the biggest thing for me is just to start taking care of myself right now because i'm not in a good space so. that's self-care that's so important like you mentioned like I, I i explained to nick about two years ago i really started to um, actively take care of my mental with meditating reading just mm -hmm. a lot of different things and last night i kind of caught myself mad over someone I don't even know on Facebook and, and I, mm -hmm. I took I put my phone down I meditated 20 minutes right there immediately mm -hmm. and then like I, I felt a lot better after that so I kind of under I'm not gonna say I fully understand what you're talking about but I can kind of relate mm -hmm. to taking care of your mental because like mm -hmm. I, like you said right now it's, it's tough on the mental toll and you're like kind of seeing it closer than what I'm seeing it so I'm sure mm -hmm. you're it's, it's tough on you so like I said much much love much power to you for sure well thank you um yeah my my friend Terry and I, we kind of just started this just to kind of have these tough conversations. And I know mm -hmm. for me, like being white in America, and I and I've talked to Terry about this before, is like, you know, I, I'm not going to understand everything. I, I can't. It's not possible. But you know, mm -hmm. the one thing I can do is talk to to women like you of how to what to do and how to learn and and, and grow. So. Um, that's kind of why you know Terry and I have been doing this and and, and we appreciate you so much for coming on too um before we kind of move on to, to Gabby a little bit did I did I did kind of want to know like what are some things that that you kind of tell people um you know black people that you that you work with on on how to to handle this and how to deal with these type of things and 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 I know you said self-care but like what are the mm -hmm. steps that that people can take so a lot of my clients who, a lot of my clients are African American. So a lot of our sessions actually have been tailored to letting it just be a safe space and an outlet for them to just talk about how they feel. So they're presenting problems with anxiety, relationship problems, depression, but right now they're considered being in crisis. So um, a lot of our sessions have been just, just let's just talk about what's going on. And honestly, you know, I've expressed my feelings to them. They've expressed their feelings to me. And typically in, in therapy, I normally don't self-disclose, but just, this is just a weird time right now. And 
in order to continue to join and engage with them. I just feel like it's something that's needed. So therapy has been looking a little different for my clients. It's just been more of, let's just talk. It's heavy. And I, we, I do give them a little bit of self-care tips, but the goal right now is just to validate and use empathy. Um, and the only thing that I, I really press on is to tell, get off social media, take a break from your phone, stop watching the TV because it's just making it worse. Worse, I know. Um, so it's really just making it a safe space for them to just talk about their anger. I let them cry, whatever they need in that moment. And I have some clients who are like, can we just not even talk about it? Let's talk about something else. And so I kind of let them run the show. I'm just really the guy. Yeah. And, and, and Jenny, you work with more like teenage and adult type type clients, correct? So I originally, now that I'm in private practice work, so private practice is great, but I originally worked with severe trauma. Um, so I used to work with uh, teenagers and adults who endured uh, severe sex assault, um, any form of child abuse, domestic violence, um, any type of crime that occurred in mm-hmm. Allegheny County. But then it was it was really, really heavy. And being a new mom, it was just kind of too much. So I had to take there. a step away. And then that's how I found the private practice I work for. So now I work from anything to severe trauma to everyday just anxiety from a job. Um, that's where I'm at now. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what's up. Um, and, and then kind of, kind of going to you, Gabby, um, I, I mean, obviously we work together, but, um, what kind of things have you seen as far as, you know, the younger generation, you know, the elementary age kids, and, and I know we have, we haven't had those, you know, one-on-one connections because we haven't been in school, but, um, what are some, and, and, and what are some things that, that you can kind of give that younger generation to, to do? Um, so I think that first, I mean, I want to commend Jada for being vulnerable enough to say, like, as a mental health professional, like, I need to step back and I need to engage in self-care because when, I I think just when you're in the health professions at all, like, it's very hard for you to put yourself first and it's very hard for you to step back and say, like, even though these 800 kids matter, like, I matter too and my mental health is important as well and recognizing, like, I need to be in tip top shape. Like I need to take care of myself in order to be the best that I can be for others. It's just, it's something that's so hard. It is so difficult for me every single day. Like it's something that I, I, I have a therapist too. So I'm constantly, you know, using that as my space to kind of like regroup for the kids. Um, it's been a very unique time because we haven't been in school and, um, School ended shortly after, I'm, I'm not going to say after these types of things happened, but after the nation decided to respond, after the world res- decided that they care and they're ready to respond. So it, it's been a really strange time for me because actually when, excuse me, when um, the riots first began, I was struggling in many different ways. Um, but one of which is like, how can I support my families and how can I support my kids? And I remember being, you know, a young black girl and hearing about racism in the news or whatever story I had just recently been told about racism. And it was scary to me. And I felt sometimes when I went to school, I felt like invisible. Like, why do these people not have to hear the information that me and my parents were talking about? And I'm scared. How come you don't have to be scared? How come everyone looks normal? Um, and so then, and then I've also been in spaces where I've gone to school and people have discussed it and it really was not a safe space for me. And so then it ends up doing more harm. And, um, you know, when I set out to be an educator, to work in mental health, that's one of the things, that's one of the ways that I give back. And that's one of the things that kind of give me peace. Um, to know that I can be there for someone else when they were going through what I what I'm going through or what have you. So to not be in school, that really, really yeah. that that was heavy to me because yeah. I can say that in the past, because you know, this is not the first black murder we have seen. It's one of many. And I, you know, I can recall in the past of when this happens over the weekend or when this is in the mm-hmm. news and we come to school the next day, I go outside. I watch my kids, you know, at recess. I go around. I make sure that that day I'm barely doing any work because I'm just in the hallways talking to people, you know. Mm -hmm. And so to not have that interaction has left me feeling very 
lost um, and kind of helpless for a while. Then, you know, Jen and I, my counseling partner, we decided to make um, a web page on our counseling website that's like strictly um, devoted to pretty much just everything that's going on in the news. Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, a, an intensive resource guide for parents um, and teachers really to address these types of things with their children and how they can um, like kind of support them right now uh, without us really, unfortunately. So that was, once I started that and once we started that idea, I think that I was able to kind of like get a grasp on like what it is that I can be doing. Yeah. Um, and then I think <laughs> the other thing was, you know, we've been meeting with our equity team a lot Sure. Um, and they're fantastic, but you know, immediately that was the first thing that we did. And I was just kind of like, you know, it, it was hard for me because I was just so anxious yeah. in those, in those conversations, like in those yeah, situations. Tell me that, yeah. Right. And so, you know, my priority, I guess at the time was, um, thinking about these statements, you know, everybody was making a statement corporations, schools, office, what have you, was, were making statements. And mm -hmm. I know how each one made me feel based on how the statement was. And so I remember being in the meeting with our equity team and we're talking about, you know, how we're going to tackle this and what we're going to say and like things like that. And honestly, I kind of put it as right now is not it's not a rational time like, yeah. this is not a time you can't be politically correct in this time that's you you literally need to be the opposite but it was just kind of like how can we acknowledge families you know pain and mm -hmm. uh, need for support you know without overexposing or without minimizing anyone else's experience so honestly we went through and we decided to write <clears throat> the most personal statement that we could. Yeah. And I wrote one from the counseling department and, you know, our principal wrote one and hers was, was raw. I mean, yeah, it really was. It know, really, it was, really was. It was completely raw and just based on experience and, and admitted confusion. I have no clue what to do with the situation. I'm so, you know, upset to see this. I have no clue where to start, but I know we have a lot. Yeah. Of I, I, I think that, I think that's one thing that, um, especially in the white community is that a lot of people are just confused. I mean, I am, I, I, and I, and I don't mean that in a way of like, you know, I'm confused as to why this is happening, why people are doing that. I, I understand that, but I think that there's a lot of people who are out there that think that like, what should I do? And then, and then again, that kind of turns into, you know, uh, well, I just won't do anything. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think that that's just as harmful. Um, and I, and I think that, you know, what, what you said, just said Gabby about, you know, reaching out and, and, and kind of going to what Jada said about the self care too, of like, you know, if you don't know, ask questions and when you're overwhelmed, take that time to yourself and, and kind of be with your thoughts. And, and, and it's, it's just so, so important too. I know, I know Terry had a couple questions for you guys too. I'm, I have a lot of questions. I'm <laughs> Nick, this was the most. This was the most excited I was for the podcast so far, just to get into the mental side of things. Both of you can kind of answer this question. You kind of touched on it a little bit, Gabby, with this not being a rational time and how this obviously isn't the first murder. Do you think that um, the pandemic has anything to do with kind of the reaction that everybody's kind of giving right now? Because the way I kind of want to look at it is like like keeping a dog in a cage all day and poking at them. You let the cage open, they're gonna go crazy. In my life, I haven't seen this sort of outpour, and this we're like we're like we're literally screaming, help us, help us! Like mm -hmm. you see it, you see it physically with the riots and with everything. Do you think that mentally or psychologically, the pandemic has anything to do with what we're seeing today and tomorrow and the next day? Either of you, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Jada. Um, you can you can take it. I think. I'm going to say part of it because a lot of the time we've been at home. We've been on stay-at-home orders and a lot of us, we've had time to think and process and be on our phones a lot, watch Netflix, watch CNN, watch Fox News, whatever you get into. So I think the pandemic probably kind of lit the flame. But one thing I want to say, this has been going on for years, even prior to mm -hmm. when I was born, because I'm only 26. And I think it really 
the Black Lives Matter movement, I believe, started around the era of Trayvon Martin. I could be wrong. My dates are all kind of crazy, yeah. but that's the time right, I really right. remember yeah. things just not okay. People tearing stuff up, people rooting, uh, looting and rioting and everything. And people didn't pay attention. Um, they didn't. And it took up until now, years later, that people want to start paying attention. And everyone asks this question of, what can I do? What can I do now? How can we help? How can we help? And it's like, yeah, you can help. But my biggest thing is like educate yourself because you can't hold that responsibility on African Americans for us to, you know, teach white people, okay, this is what you do. This is how you, this is how you learn about us. This is what we do. We came into this country and we had to figure out things on our own. So it's really unfair to us to have to hold on to the feelings of white people and say, okay, this is how you learn us. This is how you understand us. It's really up to white Americans to do their own research, do their own history, you know, really dive into the culture and understand because this country was built on the backs of immigrants and really know your history and how it's impacted people and generational trauma. And there's just so much research and literature out there that you can read to really understand and then begin to ask questions, but come prepared have a little bit of understanding in terms of, well, how can I help? What can I do? Like, just don't post a Black Lives Matter photo on your Instagram or Blackout Tuesday. Yeah. You have to do the work. You have to educate yourself. And yes, this work is exhausting and take breaks when needed. But the biggest thing I can say is to educate yourself, talk to people. You know, you guys are having a podcast. It's a great platform. Um, there's just so many things that you can do. But to answer your question, I think the pandemic did kind of spark it because we were all sitting at home and then we're like, something happened. Okay, now we're we're allowed to come out, so let's just do something. Um, but I think it did. Part of me is grateful, but part of me at the same time is like, wow, it took you guys so long. Yeah, grateful was the word. Yeah, grateful definitely mm -hmm. was the word. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it's like this is what it took. You know what I mean? This is where we're at today. Mm -hmm. And it seems like to this, honestly, it's still yeah. There was a little bit of change, but it's still getting worse because people are just hearing about lynchings now, and I'm like, this is and they're blaming it on suicide, and I'm like, ah, no, no, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I definitely, I definitely agree. And I think that, um, you know, like Jada said, like, this is not new at all, actually. Like, not literally, liter no. Like, this is embedded in the very foundation of mm -hmm. this country. So, you know, like she said, this is, this is not a new thing. And I do think that with the pandemic, you know, it's such, it's just such a unique time. Like, it's a unique time. We're doing, we're doing things and like, innovating and all these things in so many different ways right now that everything is just kind of like a toss up. Everything is just in the air right now. Like people yeah. can claim what they want. People can, you know, redo procedures and policies and like not obey by the rules. And I think that it, it kind of feels like the world has almost stopped like globally. And so now it's like, there is this disgusting, disgusting murder that is on camera and this is what's on the news besides people dying of COVID. And at this point, it's kind of like, if you're not paying attention, that you just, you've decided to ignore it. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that you're not paying attention, you've decided to ignore it. So now is like, it, it feels like since everybody else's life had to stop in general, that is the reason that it's picked up like this. I also like, you know, when, when people ask this question and when people discuss this topic, I notice that people will say, you know, like the pandemic, everybody's at home and people are fed up with racism and people are disgusted by the video and whatever, but no one mentions the fact that 70% of people who are dying from COVID in this country are black. So really, to me, that that's what, what really fuels it for me. Like, it's the whole deal right but we've had the whole deal for a long time but the fact that right now like just the utter disregard for black life every single day on the news all day we cannot stop hearing about it is like it's it's so it's very jarring it's very jarring and i think that you know chris cuomo said it best on tv when he kind of like went off script and said like guys, it's time to stop thinking about yourselves. Like, listen, look at what's happening to the Black community. Mm -hmm. You know, look, and then he actually went into all of the COVID stats. And so I felt, I was like, wow, this is the first time that I'm hearing this. And even still thereafter, it's not something that people are talking about. 
so it's it that that has been like just something very unfortunate that I it, I kind of like fixate on when I'm thinking about you know how this kind of came to be and what people are upset about and what motivated them to to do these things. Mm -hmm. I agree. Something a quick little transition. I kind of want to transition it to um part of this podcast is kind of just talking about solutions and I know that we're obviously not going to come up with it immediately but just getting the conversation started something that I think that could be a great change um when it comes to dealing with police I touched on it a little bit earlier the training and not only the training I think the psychological evaluations they need to happen regularly and they need to happen consistently because a lot of these officers they might come into the academy in tip-top shape ready to go Next thing you know, three months later, they're mentally worn. Next thing you know, they're out in the street with a, and next thing you know, they're killing somebody. And there's so many of these examples that you see and, and you hear about the officers after the fact having these mental problems. But I know in the military, if there's like a mental issue, immediately they get sent over and they get treated. But with police, they're not held to the same standard. And I, I don't understand why that is. Um, do you, with, with you two um, having to deal with mental side of things when it comes to dealing with people, would you agree that... Um, that maybe psych evaluations could be something that we look into or something that is needed? Um, I do believe mental health assessments will be very beneficial um, for our police, but we have to look at the reason, what are, what are the purpose of police? And they, you hear this term of protecting and serving, and it's almost like they kind of get to pick and choose who they want to protect and serve. And you brought a good point about the military. My fiance is a sergeant in the military and they are trained they are trained, trained to protect this country and tip top. tip top training. And they learn of when you need to be here in this country versus when you are somewhere else and you need to hurt somebody else to protect this country. Mm -hmm. Police officers believe they are just the almighty God. I'm not going to say all of them, but they just have the right to take human life. And that is just not okay. They take that idea of protect and serve and use that as, a, oh, I'm protecting and I'm serving, but at the same time, you're killing individuals. You don't have that value for human life. So you have to look at the individual's values and their history and where they come from. And sometimes I believe that some people use mental health as a crutch or because it's very stigmatized often. Because you have a mental health disorder, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go out and kill somebody. A lot of people who suffer from mental health disorders actually are more likely to harm themselves than somebody else. So whenever I hear that, I'm just like, mm, yeah, you just want to use that as an out in your court case mm -hmm. so you don't get the uh, death penalty. Um, so that whole idea of protect and serve, I really, really struggle with. Yes, I do think a psyche vow is important, but it has to go back to your values. What are you really doing this job for? Because the moment you get that gun, you get trigger happy, and then now another life is taken. Um, that quick. That yeah, quick. That's, mm -hmm. for sure. And, and and Gabby, you can kind of touch on that from a, a little different perspective, because you, you said that, that your father is a police officer mm -hmm. down here in Maryland as well. So kind of yeah. what, what has that experience been like for you and him? Um. It, that's, it's been rough. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been beyond rough. Um, like just to go a little bit into, you know, my kind of personal life, we as a family are very um, active in our communities. And as a family, a long line of activists. You know, my grandfather was very active in the civil rights movement when he was just in college, incidents, being beaten, arrested, just re and now he goes around and he usually talks to schools about his experiences and like things like that. So for us to already, you know, we already have these discussions in this house and we're constantly trying to make a difference. And all of us who actually work are always on our DEI teams, you know, at our jobs and things like that. And so for us to be talking about this issue again and now the world has decided they really they want to act they want to react it's great you know we're we're at protest we're calling we're signing petitions we're educating we do the whole nine but it has really sucked because you have my dad who's just as disgusted by all of this and by seeing it you know the way that we see it but also seeing it internally for 30 years. I mean, like, that's painful in itself. Um, 
and you know he he said we had a, a very candid conversation recently and just saying like you know when you're young you join the police force especially as a black man you're excited to go in you're going to make a difference in your community um you try to change things but you know that you're a part of a systemic issue like a larger issue so that already hearing him talk about that which he doesn't usually because he's just like the strong police officer and protector dad you know um hearing him talk about that was emotional um and then just going to protest that he's being forced to work you know they don't have a choice right now like it's all hands on deck and we don't have a choice for him not to have a job so it's like to go to those protests that irony is so painful it's like me my mom and all of my sisters and you know i know that he's there protecting the people right so that alone really um it's 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 heavy it's heavy in this house and for you know my grandfather who i was talking about that's my dad's dad so to think like this is what my grandfather went through for him and for us and he is now in a position to make a difference, which he has made a difference yeah. over the years, and it's still not enough to save his kids. That just like tiptoeing oh. around that, it's 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 very heavy. We have some serious conversations in this house. And I mean, luckily everybody's charged about it, and even my younger siblings. Yeah, are, your sister. Yeah, how about that was oh, amazing. Oh my god, she's like so much cooler. <laughs> yeah, she led like, like a protest, right? She, yeah, so she, so actually she organized this protest because she goes to um, a very, very white all girls Catholic school and her head of school in their last bulletin, school bulletin for the year, um, she spent the time talking about, you know, religious things or whatever, never said, like, did not even say the word race, did not say the word black, did not say the word murder, did not say the word protest, riot, Mm -hmm. literally you would think that this was just some random day after mass. Like I, yeah. it was, it was disgusting. And so my sister read the email and by the time I had found out about it, she had already called all of her friends of color, which there's very few of them at their school. And they crafted a, a very long letter to the head of school wow. just saying like, you know, Amazing. we feel ignored every single day. We are microaggressed every single day here. You know, you use us for like sports and diversity. And yeah. this, and I'm on the cover of that, but you couldn't acknowledge my basic trauma that I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was so powerful that at 17, she didn't even wait. I mean, she didn't like read it to me first and I didn't say, you should write a letter. You know, she like had done it. And that Amazing. sparked the conversation with the head of school with their staff diversity committee. Um, they start, now they're talking about what work they've been doing, what work they're going to do. And so she was charged with her friends to then organize a protest. Yeah. And so they organized a protest kind of like with their school. Um, and it was like a caravan protest, which I hadn't even heard of before. I, it was like, it's it was amazing. so awesome. People decorated their cars. People were like yelling at windows in Potomac. Maryland Man. neighborhoods and you should have seen Gotta love the that, faces right? in the yards. Like oh, I'm sure. Oh my God. But <laughs> yeah, so she did that. She came back. She spoke to like, I mean, that was amazing. Students. That was beautiful. It's she's just like it's I, I could have never, not at that age. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, I just got here and I'm still scared. But <laughs> yeah, it's been I mean yeah. at least just kind of like everybody being on board yeah. as a family has been, I guess, relieving. That's such a cool thing. And I think it touches on something that we've been speaking about the past few weeks about the area Nick and I come from, there were no black leaders in the school. So th- I told the people last week, I didn't think about college until literally a month before I graduated. Mm-hmm. But your little sister, she comes from a family of black leaders. So she got to see you guys set the example and then she got to go out and do that herself. We're trying to push for getting more black leaders in these yeah. schools so these kids can see, oh, I don't have to be a basketball player. I can be that when I get old. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And yep. that's a great example. Your little sister doing exactly that. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, we had um, we had an attorney on last week, and she gave that example exactly. She said that she grew up in Alabama, and when she was going to these court hearings and all that, you know, she wasn't seeing people that looked like her. She wasn't seeing, you know, a, a anyone that looked at, looked or talked like her. But when she got up to D.C., she was like, oh, you know, and 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 she was like, wow, I really do belong here. I really do, and you know, should be doing this. I think that's that's so important too. And I, I like you said, Gabby, I think that's amazing that that she did that as well. Um, Jada, just kind of, we don't want to kind of keep you guys here too long, but just kind of, what is like kind of one thing you want people to kind of take away and, um, from you speaking with us tonight and just kind of one maybe tip or, you know, something that yeah. you kind of leave us with. I was going to add to that, Jada. Um, you don't have to go too much in, too big into detail, but for some people who don't regularly take care of their mental, what's like a starting point, you know, for someone listening that says, you know what, I should start doing that. What's kind of like a starting point for them to kind of better themselves in that sense? To start, just number one, if you're not um, ready necessarily to reach out to a therapist, I would say take a break from social media, your cell phone, put it down. Seriously, put it on do not disturb, walk away from it, go outside, get some fresh air, just be present with yourself. That is one of my biggest tips and takeaways. If Because some people are afraid to go to therapy and that's another conversation for another day, but mm -hmm. just Absolutely. care for yourself and put the smartphone down, just, just take a break. That's the biggest thing I can say. Um, awesome. I appreciate awesome. that. Yeah, me too. Me too. And then Gabby, what is kind of one uh, one takeaway you want to uh, kind of give out to everybody? One kind of me last message, I guess. I mean, I second what Jada said for sure. I've just started putting my phone down. Like I, I set a time for no news. That means I can't get on Twitter either because it's yeah. like everywhere. everywhere. Um, but yeah, like I think that that is really important. I also you know, want people to take away the fact that this is here and mm. this is not only a point of controversy and like a, you know, a charge for change. This is trauma that people mm. are dealing with. And so I, you know, I want parents and educators and, and everybody just even in the corporate world, you know, I want people to realize that people are experiencing trauma around them and they should treat them as such and i would just charge people to just you know like jada said go educate yourself google is is so powerful you don't yeah. need to ask me what you need to learn yeah. about black people. <laughs> you know yeah. like, search, search black people and see what comes up I mean, it's like, so i think just using your resources and talking to your kids in a way that is age appropriate Sure. Um, which is very, very hard for Black families because of the reality of their situation, which sure. is another topic for another day. But yeah, um, yeah that's well, what I would say. There's a lot of topics. If you need a, a visual or snippet. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, just no, really no, quick. No. I'm really yeah, good on music and cinetherapy. And there's one I would just like to share with people who ever listen to this. If you need a visual depiction of what a Black experience is like, it's not every Black experience, which is a small example. There is a music artist named Wale. I'm pretty sure you know who he is. Yeah. He's based on oh those yeah. Yeah. Um, he has this video called Sue Me. And I recommend yes. everybody watch it. Um, actually use it for a class presentation. Yeah. But all right, that's let's, one let's of plug the link. Watch it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we will. Sue Me. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yep. We'll, we'll plug the link video. in the description. Awesome. Well, thank you for the tips. Thank you for the insight. This was the most fun I had so far on the podcast we've done. I, I like how you guys said another topic for another day. There's so many things to discuss and so many things to get into. And I'm happy that we kind of have something going. And I, and I hope one day you guys can maybe hop back on to get into the other nuances of it. But until then, um, thank you again. We appreciate it. Much love and um, much blessings to your work and the line of work that you do. Yeah, thank you Thanks. both so, so, so much. Thank you both. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you. Keep doing this. Coming. This is this is awesome. This is awesome. Doing work. Like this is the work. Is, yeah, we're saying this is the work. It's not the nice repost. Nice to meet you, Gabby, too. Yeah, nice <laughs> to meet you too. Thanks, guys. See you guys. No Have a great night. You too. Peace. Is it still my exactly what she said? It's not just about the repost. It's not just about the tweets. It's not just about the retweets, man. Get out and actually educate yourself. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. Get out not and put in the all. work. Get out and speak to people. Get out and talk to, like what Brianna said, she just sent an email to the superintendent and now things, the ball's moving. The ball just tried calling me. No, you're good. Yeah, yeah, now the ball's just moving just like that. So like like they said, man, just, uh, just get out and be active. Do your thing, absolutely.
All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, y'all. I finally got my head right I move in silence, you won't catch me in them headlights And they love to say they love you if they need some If they see you moving solid in your bread's right